Welcome back to MMA Al Dente. I am the guy who picked Mark Hunt to defeat Josh Barnett. And I'm here to talk about the televised prelims for e UFC 99, or the ESPN prelims. And these are fucking stacked, just like the main card. The majority of these fights could headline a fight night event. And that includes this one here, the main event of the prelims, Curtis Blades versus Jailton Almeida who I'll, I'll slip and call him Jailton here and there. But this guy is seems like he's destined for greatness, championship-level fights, if not championships themselves. And Curtis Blades is the best fighter of his generation who did not ever get a title shot. Although, don't hold me to that. There's probably some speculation and arguments to be made there. But he's one of the very best, Curtis Blades. One of the best heavyweights of his era. A uh, guy with, I, I mean, really only one major weakness, and that's his chin. He's been knocked out, TKO'd a few times by monsters. Francis Ngannou, Derek Lewis, and Sergei Pavlovich. Three of the hardest punchers in history. In the history of the human race. So... Little forgiveness there, but it is still his primary path to defeat, I should say, his biggest weakness. But he, as opposed to the guys that have fought Jailton Almeida in the UFC, he is a monster wrestler, Curtis Blades. Even though he may not be the monster wrestler he once was, he's kind of gotten away from that. But that's only because his striking has evolved to the point where, for some fights, he doesn't need his wrestling. And... This, uh, I mean, he's definitely going to need his wrestling in this fight. He may not need his offensive wrestling, but he's certainly going to need defensive wrestling to beat Jailton Almeida. Jailton Almeida is a guy with 20 wins, 19 finishes. And even though he's finished 12 by submission and 7 by TKO, his wins all look the same. He's on top of you, dominating you, and he either beats the shit out of you or strangles you. And he's done so at a very high level into the UFC uh, Jairzinho Rosenstrike, who looked very good a few days ago in his main event in the UFC, uh, he had nothing for Jailton Almeida. That looked like a fight out of UFC fucking nine. Okay, it was uh, that was something from the nineties. That's how good this guy is. He makes current main event elite heavyweights look like nineties level jobbers, to use a pro wrestling term, but. Again, here, what makes this matchup so fascinating is this is the one matchup I'd pick out of all the heavyweights to test Jailton Almeida. The one guy, I mean, of course, it'd be nice to see him fight Nganu or Stipe Miocic or whatever. But Curtis Blades, despite how he's looked in some fights, I still think of him as the wrestler. And I want to see if Jailton can pass that test. I'm picking Curtis Blades to win. I'm picking Curtis Blades to actually get a TKO, which is... My way of saying he's going to stuff the takedowns and then have too much for Jailton on the feet. I do think that's how Jailton's next loss will look. But I don't know if it's going to be Curtis to get it done. I'm just picking it to be him. I think Curtis Blades, again, the one way to go through him is by being a killer striker. And Jailton is not that. Jailton's got some excellent singular solo strikes that are good for nothing but a shot, a deep shot into his opponent's hips. He strikes his way into takedowns. He's got some beautiful kicks and a nice overhand, but there's no sustained striking with Jailton Almeida. It's all just a means to an end. And I want to know what happens if he doesn't reach that end. And I think Curtis Blades is the guy to show him what happens there. Uh, Jailton, he's been defeated twice, five, six years ago or so. Whereas two losses, or six or seven years ago, I think, 2017 and 2018. He was knocked out in 20 seconds by this guy, uh, Tiago Maheda. Guy knocked him out. I've seen the footage of it. It happened. And the one fight I haven't seen was his decision loss to Bruno Assis over at Chuto Brazil fucking 80. It got a bunch of other Chuto Brazil events on Fight Pass, but not that one. Either way, I'm thinking he was out grappled which uh, I'd still love to see. But just knowing Bruno Assis, I'm thinking that's how that fight went. And uh, that would be interesting if Curtis Blades is able to turn the tables and out-wrestle and take uh, Jailton Almeida down. I would still pick him to get the finish, but I really wish I could have seen that fight against uh, Bruno Assis. But one thing Bruno Assis is, is not Curtis Blades. If Curtis Blades is winning, he's dominating in a way that that guy is not. 
Uh, still, Chayotin has passed every test, and he has been taken down against uh, Nasruddin Nasruddinov, if that's his name, the guy he beat on the Contender Series. He was taken down there, uh, kind of judo-tossed, but turned the tables right away, kept it a grappling match, insisted on it, and ended up winning with a rear naked choke not long after that, or early in round two, I believe. Uh, so uh, there's n uh, not a lot of doubt in Jailton Almeida, just that real knockout punch I've seen uh, that happened seven, eight years ago. But he's looked perfect at the UFC level. I'm just picking Curtis Blades because I think Curtis Blades is – Precisely the type of matchup that could stop somebody like Jailton Almeida. I'm sure Kip Curtis has seen his fights and he knows how he's going to have to use his wrestling here. And then, look, on the feet, I think Curtis is a better striker. The guy that I've seen TKO good fighters in the UFC. Uh, Junior Dos Santos and fucking Chris Dawkins. All right. Junior, though. But I, uh, I would pick him to outstrike Jailton Almeida. Having said that, though, I don't trust either. Uh, I don't trust Curtis Blades' durability. Again, he's lost to some of the hardest strikers ever, but he's still been knocked out a few times. And Jailton, if he knocked him out, it would still surprise me, but it wouldn't be the biggest surprise as my cat strolls across the camera there. Uh, I think uh, Curtis should win this fight, though, because uh, Jailton is not going to be able to capitalize on his weakness, and Curtis Blades is going to be the more seasoned fighter. That's the prediction. Smallest of bets on him, but not heavy, especially because he was at better odds when the fight was first booked. But he was always going to be my prediction. So Curtis Blades wins by TKO in round two, I'll say. I just really want to see this fight go long, and I want to see what happens when plan A fails uh, for Jailton Almeida. So we'll see what happens, but I'm hoping Curtis gets the win. Uh, check out the next portion of the video. I'm doing that shit again where... I'm about to wrap up the video. No, this is the four fights on the ESPN prelims. So let's keep it rolling. Next up, we have Caitlin Sermonara, formerly known as Caitlin Chukagian, taking on Macy Barber. My pick for this fight is Caitlin Chukagian wins a decision. The thing I'm most sure of is it going the distance, it going to a decision. I'd be surprised if either girl got a finish here, although Macy's very fucking dangerous. Uh, but um, picking Caitlin to win, I think it'll be one of those typical Caitlin Chukagan fights where you're saying it really could have gone either way. But I think she will fight well on the outside. I think she will utilize some long-range weapons against uh, Macy and do, do so consistently throughout the fight. Macy's a much more dangerous, powerful striker, though. And she's a girl who is much more inclined to grapple, even though Chukagan's good at jiu-jitsu herself. Uh, but Macy is physical. She's got the physicality advantage. She's a bully in there. And I do think if she gets in tight with Caitlin Chukagan, she can bully her around. Maybe not in the clinch because Caitlin's going to have that leverage. But if she gets her down, Macy's uh, a little tank. Having said that, I'm picking Caitlin to win because I think this fight will be contested mostly on the feet. I do think uh, Macy Barber, despite having a lot of momentum here with uh, five consecutive wins, I think she lost two of those wins, and her only two losses are to good fighters, one of which was uh, an injury. She suffered an injury, tore her MCL, ACL, PCL, whatever the fuck, against Roxanne Modafferi, and despite being discouraged, she didn't go anywhere in that fight. So that was a good look, I guess. And then Alexa Grasso really just uh, outstruck her and made her look limited. She was chasing Alexa and step and a half behind that whole fight, but it got better with age as a loss because now Alexa is the world champion. So uh, she's still even coming off the loss years ago, her last loss being to the champion. With that and five wins, she's got a ton of momentum here. And Caitlin Chukagin is one of the best five fighters or so in probably a few different weight classes in the last few years. She's a very good, consistent fighter. And I'm picking Caitlin to win because I think this will be close, but Caitlin Chukagan is one of the best point fighters. In a lot of close decisions, she's gotten it done, uh, outpointing some good, uh, competent fighters. Viviani Arujo, very close fight. Jessica I, fucking whoever else. Amanda Hibosh. But Chukagan is uh, definitely going to be 
slower than Macy Barber. I'd say she's definitely more likely to get finished, uh, especially because she's not such a potent finisher herself. She did head kick Liz Carmouche at UFC 205, but uh, not a big finisher, Caitlin Chukagan. She was finished by Valentina Shevchenko and Jessica Andraj. There's a little forgiveness there. Those are two fucking monsters. Uh, but Macy Barber is uh, an above average finisher at the UFC level herself. She's only had one lately, and it was her last win over Amanda Hebosh. Fucking amazing victory. Uh, but even before that, on her way up in the UFC, she put away some good fighters. Jillian Robertson and uh, uh, JJ Aldrich got her out of there. So she's uh, got danger on her side, but that's just some secondary thing to consider here. The primary thing is this fight's going the distance, I believe. I'd be surprised if either fighter was able to get a finish. And I think Caitlin Chukagan's a better point fighter. I think Macy Barber would have to get inside and rough her up. And she might be able to do that. But when she's not doing that, I expect Chukagan to be winning on the outside and being the much more active striker. She's got those diverse kicks, uh, stab into the gut. I think she'll keep Macy Barber at bay. And at the very least, score enough points to uh, make this one close. But I predict win her the decision. So, Chu Kagan is the decision. I uh, is the pick. Chu Kagan by the decision is the pick. And I bet on her small at minus one at a uh, plus one seventy. I think uh, they got those odds wrong. I think this is a pretty close fight. Uh, but the thing I'm most sure of again is the decision, which. Right now, the over-under is set at two and a half rounds, and the over is minus 360. So I've thrown that in a few parlays. But, uh, again, the uh, the good action is on Caitlin Chukagan. I got Chukagan winning, and I'll wait to see the props because, again, if either girl wins, I'm pretty sure it's by decision. All right, on to the next one. All right, next up is Mateusz Kamrat versus Rafael Dos Anjos. I would love to see Rafael Dos Anjos win, and I do think there's value on him at plus 350. Just, uh, you know, it seems like such a juicy, appealing number to me. But my pick is Mateusz Gamrat wins this fight, and there's no value on him at minus 455. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if it was a lopsided fight, but on paper, I can tell you it's closer than that. Uh, he shouldn't be minus 455 over Rafael Dos Anjos. Uh, or Rafael Dos Anjos. I think he wants to go with Rafael. Could be wrong on that. But regardless, Mateusz Gamrat, despite being a well, lightweight who doesn't have the physicality and the strength of the welterweights that have beaten Rafael Dos Anjos, which are some beastly welterweights. Uh, but despite that, I still think uh, Mateusz Gamrat should be able to bully him around with Mateusz Gamrat's wrestling. And I think uh, that will be the story of the fight. But, of course, if I'm wrong, I'd still pick Mateusz Gamrat to win on points. I think Mateusz Gamrat's a good striker. I think he's got excellent cardio. And I think he makes the most of his cardio with a great work rate. And uh, he will be pushing the pace no matter how the fight plays out. He will be the one pushing the pace and, I think, uh, uh, bringing the action more. So I would pick him to win a decision really uh, whether he gets the takedowns or not. But I do think the takedowns will be there for him against RDA. RDA, he's such a well-rounded fighter, and he's got the deepest resume in the history of the sport, maybe. Just fought nothing but the best. And this is just another example of that, him fighting a killer at however old he is, being a plus 350 underdog. Uh, the guy never takes an easy fight. Uh, and that makes him underrated which is why I think there's a little value on him at plus 350. But I've still been, I've still seen him defeated enough. I've seen every one of his fights in the UFC anyway. And I think uh, this is a fight that Mateusz Gamrat should win. Gamrat doesn't have any gaping hole in his game. He's a very healthy fighter. RDA's got a few knockouts, nothing crazy. You know, the Terry Edom fight, or no, he armbarred Terry Edom. He knocked out George Sotoropoulos. That was right. But uh, either way, he, uh, Mateusz Gamrat is not going to get finished by RDA. I think even if RDA was able to take him down and win the wrestling battle, I'd expect Gamrat to survive. And, uh, like I said, uh, expecting the fight to go long, I'd pick Gamrat to out hustle him. As far as Gamrat getting a finish, 
I'd be surprised if he submitted RDA because it's never happened, even though Clay Guida had a submission win over him for a few years before it was changed to a TKO inexplicably. But it was a jaw injury in round three, uh, and RDA was doing well in the fight. But either way, uh, Mateusz Gamrot winning by knockout, that would surprise me too, but not as much. RDA has been knocked out a few times throughout his, uh, throughout his career. Knocked out by Eddie Alvarez and then by Jeremy Stevens, of course. Uh, Clay Guida, technically, like I said, he tapped out because he had a jaw injury, but whatever. And Rafael Fazeev, of course, in round five. So they've happened sporadically throughout his career, but it's uh, been a weakness. And it wouldn't surprise me if Gamrock got it done. Look at how he got it done with Scott Holtzman. But Gamrock's not Mr. Knockout himself. He's a good, competent striker and a great athlete. But when he wins, it's with the work rate. And that's what I'm expecting to be the, uh, the difference maker here. Mateusz Gamrock, by decision, is the pick. Maybe the prop will be worth it. But with these money line odds, I fucking doubt it. I think I'm just staying away from this, which is just another way of saying I'm going to get fucked up and bet on Rafael Dos Anjos. And finally, the opening fight of the ESPN prelims or the televised prelims is Pedro Munoz versus Kyler Phillips, which might be the first fight on this card that I've broken down starting from the top that is not worthy of headlining a fight night event, although it's still a very good fight. And uh, I'd love to see them go five rounds, to be honest. But this is still a very good fight, great opener. And Pedro Munoz is my guy, and that's why I'm picking him to win, because a total bias. Now, look, I think uh, Pedro Munoz, his durability is the top, the most reliable trait in this fight. So I think as good as Kyler Phillips is, and he's a well-rounded guy, really good everywhere. I think Pedro Munoz, at the very least, will keep himself safe. And I also like Pedro Munoz's uh, cardio a little better than Kyler Phillips. And I'm aware Pedro Munoz lost round three in the fight against Marlon Chito Vera in his last one. But I still trust the cardio of Munoz. Kyler Phillips has been defeated twice, and cardio cost him in both fights. Holly and Paiva beat him by majority decision, where he had Paiva out, out of it in round one. Just a punch away from being the victor. And he got a 10-8 round, I believe, on one judge's scorecard, one out of three. But after that, he couldn't put his foot back on the gas. Holly and Paiva was piecing him up. Holly and Paiva was getting the better of him. And the same thing happened in his regional fight against Victor Henry. He had a lot of success, took Victor Henry's back early on. And then in the end, his wrestling wasn't there for him where it was early. And Victor Henry started getting the better of that battle. And Victor Henry was the one that won rounds two and three. So it's not the most definitive trait that he has weak cardio, but it's been responsible for his only two losses. The fact that he wasn't able to sustain his pace for 15 minutes. And Pedro Munoz, while he's not Mr. Marab Dwalish Willie or whoever with the pace and, you know, like Mateusz Gamrot, Pedro Munoz is still a good 15 minute fighter. He's proven to be a good 25 minute fighter as well on occasion. That Frankie Edgar fight was, eh, whatever. Uh, for another day. But uh, Pedro is also, between the two, I'd say the more durable and also the more dangerous. I think he's more dangerous, Pedro Munoz. I think Kyler Phillips has overall more uh, diverse striking and grappling, but Pedro Munoz still has the best weapon, the harder power and the better singular submission, the guillotine choke. And that combined with his durability and is veteran savvy. This guy doesn't go anywhere, barely ever gets hurt. He's just a really tough out for anybody uh, looking to crack into that top 10 or whatever, which I don't even know the fucking rankings, but it's something like that with Kyler Phillips here. And I'm picking Pedro Munoz to win. He's got leg kicks from hell. He's got power from hell. And with his durability, his traits, and the potential weakness I've seen from Kyler Phillips, I've got Munoz winning a decision. I played his money line at plus 205, which, of course, covers the finish uh, and, and the decision. But I will wait to see his, uh, his uh, what, what do you call it, spread. They have a point spread on DraftKings anyway, where he, as the underdog, plus 205, will hopefully have a positive number for his 
point spread, which means if he wins one round on a judge's scorecard on the judge's scorecard by the majority of the judges, or gets a finish himself and wins in any other way or decision, then you get then you hit the bet. And that's what I'll be looking to play with Pedro Munoz. I think Pedro Munoz, if he loses, it's likely to be by decision. Again, his durability is what I trust the most. And I trust his skill set to uh, at least take a round from Kyler Phillips. Again, he's my pick. I think he's going to take more than one round. But even if things don't go his way, having seen Kyler Phillips fall off in round three, even though he he's looked good in round three in other fights, go ask uh, Marcelo Rojo about it. But... I think Pedro Munoz winning a round is a pretty safe bet. So I'll be waiting to see that when it opens up, and I'll be much more comfortable with that than I am with his money line at plus 205. And again, Kyla Phillips, if he wins this fight, it's by decision. So I, you know, I'll see what the line looks like, but of course I'll feel comfortable hedging with that because I consider it impossible to finish Pedro Munoz or Cheeto Vera by knockout or submission. So... Pedro Munoz by decision is the pick, and Pedro Munoz at plus 205 is the small bet, but again, I'm going to wait to see the point spread. Him at plus three oh, uh, plus 3.5 points uh, to win at plus money, hopefully, or something like that, that'll be what I play. And that's it for the televised prelims video here. Like, share, subscribe, all that horse shit, and check out my other videos.